Hey there, this is Dwayne from IFAS IT with the University of Florida, and this is your orientation for the 2020 NACA Virtual Conference. This year, your entire conference will be virtual, but our goal is still to make your conference more engaging than ever. This video is going to give you all the information that you need to connect to our virtual venue, participate in your committee and regional meetings, and also connect with your peers. To accomplish this, we'll be using Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams allows us to put all the resources for your conference in one place. This includes your meetings, files that you may share with one another, messages, and session recordings. And we realize that Teams may be new to some of you, so we're going to start by showing you how to accept the invitation that you will have received from the University of Florida, and then how to download and install the Teams desktop application. So let's start by taking a look at the invitation that you'll need to accept to access the UF team system. Be sure to check the email that you use to register for the conference, and you should see an email that looks similar to this one. From here, you'll need to click the accept invitation button, which will then redirect you to a permissions page where you'll then need to click accept to become a member of the Gator Nation. After clicking accept, you'll be automatically redirected to the UF team site. From here, you'll be prompted to either download the desktop app or use the web app. We highly recommend downloading and installing the desktop application for either Windows or Mac. This will ensure the best conference experience. So if you don't have the desktop app just yet, click here to start the download. If you forgot to download the desktop app, don't worry. There's an easy site that you can get to called aka.ms forward slash download teams. Just head to this site and you'll be able to download the desktop app again for either Windows or Mac. Once you have the desktop app downloaded and installed, you'll need to log into it using your university credentials. In most cases, this will be the same address that you use to register for the conference. Upon first logging in, you'll see your university's team system. But you need to access the University of Florida's team's system. So you'll need to go up to the top right corner of the team's app and select University of Florida guest in order to switch organizations. If you don't do this, you won't be able to see the virtual venue that will be housing your conference. So now that you've accepted your invitation, you've downloaded and can access the desktop application, we'll show you how to access and browse the NACA 2020 team. So once you've switched organizations over to the University of Florida in Microsoft Teams, the first thing that you'll see is the NACA 2020 team. I'd like to pause for a moment though and talk about what a team is and how we plan to use Microsoft Teams for your conference. I'd like for you to think of this team as a virtual representation of the hotel that you'd normally be visiting in years past with rooms for your committees, a place to browse posters, get technical support. There's even a lounge that you can use to hang out and chat with your peers. These rooms give us a place to capture all the information that's released throughout the entire conference, which can then be viewed later just in case you miss something. First, we'll start with the general room. This is the first thing that you'll see upon entry to our virtual venue. So think of this kind of like the lobby. This room will serve as a place for information about the conference and announcements. This will act as kind of like our PA system throughout the event. So be sure to check here often for news throughout the conference. You can access a virtual agenda here as well. And be sure to check at the top of each room that you visit for extra tabs that will lead you to more information about that room's specific topic. Next, we have the lounge. This is a place to socialize with your peers. Anyone can post here. Anyone can start a meeting here. This is your place for that, that social interaction that you would normally get at an in-person conference. We'd also like to encourage you to go ahead and post a message here to say, hey, I got in, to let us know that you successfully made it into our virtual venue. 
Now, you may have noticed over on the left side when I'm looking at my list of rooms that not all of the rooms are automatically made visible. This allows you to pick and choose which rooms you would like to see in your list. Think of this kind of like building your own program. So if you are not a member of any region except the Southern region, go to hidden channels, hover over Southern region and click show. And this will make this room automatically show in your list. This is unique to each person. So you can build your view however you'd like. If you'd like to show all the channels, that's completely fine. If you'd like to only show the channels that are relevant to your attendance at this conference, that is also fine. So you can pick and choose any of these that you'd like. And like I said, you'll be able to build your own program. So once you have your, your program built, the next thing that I'd like to show you is how to actually attend the meetings that will take place in these rooms. Because each of these rooms, again, thinking of this like it's a virtual hotel, will actually house the, the people who will attend the meeting. So we're going to get a few meetings going, and I'm going to show you how to learn when a meeting is running, how to see when a meeting has been scheduled, how to join a meeting, and how to control your uh, meeting experience inside of Teams. So here we are again, looking at the team that will be used for the virtual conference. You can see that I've got a couple of new rooms that I've added to my list. I've got the awards committee room, and I've also got an extension agent onboarding room. We've also gone ahead and scheduled a few uh, mock meetings in these rooms. So when you enter a room, you'll be able to see each scheduled meeting that's contained inside of that room. And if you look closely at it, you'll be able to see the time and date that that meeting has been scheduled for. So in this example, we've got Tuesday, September 22nd at 1 p.m. And the other meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, the 23rd at 3 p.m. When these meetings go live, you'll see this meeting bar will change to a join button. And you'll also see a purple camera icon located over here in your list of rooms that will let you know that that room has an active meeting running in it right now. So let's get a few of these meetings started so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've gone ahead and started the meeting in the awards committee room, and you'll see that that meeting bar turned into a join button. Uh, you'll be able to see all the meetings that are running all at the same time in any of the channels that you have chose to show in your channel list. So now you'll see that we have another meeting running for extension agent onboarding. See these camera icons here. So let's take a look at what's going on inside of the awards committee room. So I'm going to join that. This is the pre-join experience. So this is where you can toggle your camera on and off. You can toggle your microphone on and off. And also please note that if there are already at least five people in the meeting, your camera will be, uh, or I'm sorry, your microphone will be muted by default. So I'm going to click join. Now, once you're in here, you'll have options to control your meeting experience uh, or your, your call controls. And I'd like to switch over and show you a quick PowerPoint on how that may look because there are actually two different views for this. So the first view is what's called the new meeting experience where you will see the call controls up here at the top of your screen. Uh, and let's go through these real quick. You can view the meeting chat and you can raise your hand digitally to let the presenter know that you have a question. You can toggle your camera and your microphone on or off. And it's uh, best practice to leave yourself muted throughout the duration of the call, unless you have a speaking part or a question. And if you click the three dots, you'll get an extra menu where you can bring down uh, a few extra options. So you'll be able to toggle large gallery view, which lets you see 49 video feeds simultaneously. Uh, also together mode, which is pretty cool. You can see the entire audience sitting inside of a virtual uh, auditorium. And you can apply background effects like custom virtual backgrounds, as well as turning on live captions if you uh, need live captions. The other meeting experience looks similar, uh, but the call controls are at the bottom of your screen. These call controls also disappear. So if you don't move your mouse for a few seconds, these will fade away. 
Uh, if you need to bring them back, just try clicking in somewhere in the middle of the meeting stage or wiggling your mouse around and they should reappear. Uh, very similar controls. You can mute your camera and microphone here. You can view the chat and raise your hand as well. And again, just like before, you can turn on live captions. You can toggle your camera and microphone settings. If you have multiple sets of speakers or maybe you have multiple cameras, you can choose which one you'd like to use. And you can also show background effects and choose a virtual background. So let's go back to our meeting and see what's going on in that meeting. So here I am again, I can see my call controls here on the bottom, I can open up the meeting chat and this is where I can communicate with the other people who are in this meeting. And I can see that Joe is sharing a PowerPoint presentation right now that I can view on my screen. I can tell Joe, hey, nice presentation. You can also do some more interactive uh, communications here using emojis and GIFs. So if you have a GIF website, you can copy and paste GIFs into it. Uh, uh, there's lots of pre-built emojis in here. So I'll give Joe a heart there and uh, I can give uh, react to certain messages in the conversation with a thumbs up and a few various other reactions as well. Now, one thing that you may experience if you are participating in a lot of different meetings, uh, once you start chatting in a meeting, if you're no longer actively in that meeting and the, the messages continue, you'll get notifications because people are responding to a message thread that you were actively participating in. Uh, one thing that you can do to mitigate this is if you go up to the top right, click your profile picture or your initials, click on where it says settings, head over to notifications, and you can say uh, replies that uh, to conversations I replied to, you can change that to just say only show in feed. That will stop the notifications from popping up down by the clock and, and making the sound. I highly recommend doing this. Otherwise, you know, if you're in and out of a whole lot of different meetings and using the chat function, you can start getting notifications for all of those meetings. All right, I hope that you found this video useful. Um, I would like to advise everyone that you can go to our support site if you need to. We have a, a form that you can fill out where you can reach our technical support department. You can reach that form at aka.my forward slash NACA 2020 support. And we'll put that up on the screen for you now. And once again, I would just like to thank you for listening and watching this video. We hope that you have a really, really great event, and I look forward to seeing you on Teams.